Okay, so let's do another one of these gas law problems. Uh, this one's a little more convoluted, but we, we'll be able to figure it out a bit. So it says, um, if you have 10 liters of carbon dioxide gas, 10.0, at 300 Kelvin and 1.0 ATM, if we double the volume and double the temperature, what is the new pressure? Okay, so what are we looking for in this one? Pressure, pressure two, right? P two, okay. And it says that we're going to double the volume. So what would the volume, the new volume be? Twenty liters, Twenty liters right? Twenty point zero liters. And the new temperature is also going to be doubled. So what would that be? Six hundred Kelvin. And remember, we got to put that dot there. To make sure we know that um, it's three significant figures. Okay. So, do any of the variables change? Does volume change in the process? Yes. Yeah. So, does temperature change? Yes. Does pressure change? Yes. Yeah, it's going to change too. So, um, when we write PV equals nRT, are we just going to use this form of it, or are we going to divide by the other PV equals nRT? Yeah. So, we'll put ones on everything. PV equals nRT, and we're going to put twos. Okay, and now we're going to cancel out the things that didn't change, okay? So pressure changed, right? So that stays in there. Volume changed, that stays in there. Number of moles, did that change? No. Uh -uh. So we're going to cancel that out. R never changes, so we cancel that out. And T changed, right? So we're going to leave that in. So we're looking for P2, right? So let's write out what we've got now. P1, V1, divided by P2, V2, equals T1 over T2, like that. Okay, so remember, we're looking for P2. So the first thing we're going to do is what? Flip. Flip, right? We're going to flip them over, okay? So P2, V2, divided by P1, V1 equals T2 divided by T1. Okay, remember, we got to isolate P2. So can anybody tell me what we need to do? Multiply both sides by what? P1, V1. P1, V1. And divide both sides by what? So P1, V1. And divided by what did we say? V2. V2, because we want to get P2 by itself, right? So if we divide by V2, right? Let's cancel now. Does P1 cancel? Yes. Yeah. Does V1 cancel? Does it cancel, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Does V2 cancel? <laughs> Does it yes. or not? Yes. yes. Okay. So what are we left with on this side? Just P2, right? We've isolated it. Okay, so let's write what we've got. P2 equals T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 times V2. Is everybody okay with doing that? If you're not, get better at it. Okay. Can I erase this part here? All of this part that we've done? Okay. Okay, so P2 equals, well let's just plug in. So we've got T2, which is 600 Kelvin, and we're already in Kelvin, so we don't have to change our temperature. That's right. P1, 1.0 ATM, and V1, 10.0 liters, divided by T1, 
which is 300 Kelvin, times V2, which is 20 liters, 20.0 liters, like that. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see. We can cancel kelvins, we can cancel liters, and we're left with ATM. ATMs are good pressure units. Okay. So, um, 600 times 10 divided by 300 divided by 20. I guess we didn't need to do that in the country. Um, what do we get? 1.00 ATM. So that was kind of a tricky problem, okay? Because when we doubled both of those, they offset each other. Okay. So are there any questions about this one? Okay, it is a tricky one, but 